and be glad. Uh, before we uh, go any further, I did was told to make a few more announcements as well as to introduce myself. Like uh, I was introduced earlier, my name is Pastor Josh Pontius from Holy Spirit Lutheran Church in Juno Beach, which sends their greetings and uh, lets you know that they have been praying for you both as a church in our conference and just for everything that has happened with Pastor Marianne and all that you're going through. So thank you for letting me be here this morning. Um, I do wish it was under different circumstances, of course, but I am excited and delighted to be here. Uh, just as a way of really quick introduction, I am a first call pastor. I have been in this gig for about four months now. Um, so uh, I was called uh, to Holy Spirit in November of this year. Uh, I live fairly close to there in Palm Beach Gardens with my wife and two sons, uh, Grayson, who is six, my son Daxton is uh, just about six months old. So yeah, I've got a lot on my plate right now. If you might, <laughs> if you have any kind of indication of what that is like. Um, I'm excited to be here. Um, I am mostly excited because I'm in addition to serving as associate pastor down there, I'm also a musician with our worship team, which means I have to be there at 7 a.m. on most mornings. I didn't have to be here till 9.30. <laughs> So, you know, if just Pastor Mayor just needs like a week off, some time away, just whatever happens, just call me again. It really is quite okay. Um, I, I'm a man of passion. I'm a man of excitement. Uh, so if I get a little crazy during the sermon later or during communion, I'd like to beg your forgiveness. Um, this is the greatest story ever told, and I cannot help but get excited about it. So if I get a little too fast, if I get a little too excited, if I start jumping around or anything like that, you know, just go with it, just roll with it. So I did have a few other announcements that I was asked to make. Um, in addition uh, to the annual meeting that has been postponed, and I'm sure you're all broken up about that, um, Ash Wednesday service is still being held on March the 2nd on the church property at six o'clock p.m. Uh, it's located on Tradition Boulevard north of ACOC Celebration of Life Center. I'm trying to pronounce these things right, and I have no idea what any, when I, what any of this is. Uh, bring a long lawn chair to sit on. It'll be a service of the word only, so no communion. And Pastor Marianne will be leading the service with the imposition of ashes. Um, the next announcement, we want to say thank you to the men at work with Dave Pierce and crew of 10. You cleaned up five and a half miles of road in tradition. Five and a half. Amen. That is a uh, phenomenal work in the community that I'm excited to hear about, even if I have no idea where any of those things are. Uh, and lastly, uh, Pastor Marianne did want to pass along her thanks to each and every one of you for your prayers, your love, your support of her and Carl during this uh, just so difficult time. Uh, I can't even imagine. So thank you to all of you from her uh, for that prayer and support. So thank you very much. Now I need to go put this down because I don't need that till later. And I'd like to invite you to stand as you are able. Take delight in the Lord who satisfies the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord and trust in God's ash. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for God. The Lord is our refuge, our refuge in times of trouble. And blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who comes to wake us from sleep, who leads us into the light of grace. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So let us be honest and confess what separates us from God and our neighbors, trusting in God's constant desire to forgive and renew. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your ways or trusted your promises. We love only those who love us. We show kindness only to those who are kind to us. We give only what we expect to receive. Forgive us, Lord. Fill our hearts with your selfless love. Change our lives by your matchless grace. These things we pray through Christ our Savior. Amen. 
hear the voice of Jesus. The spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim release to the captives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim to you that your sins are forgiven and you are released. The joy of the Lord is your strength and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are yours forever. Amen. You may be seated. And it looks like we're getting ready to do a song, which I'm excited about. Thank you. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred, we may so love, where there is injury, pardon, and when there is despair, hope. Grant, O divine Master, that we may seek to console, understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign the Father and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. I'd like to invite you to please rise as you are able. This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the sixth chapter. 
To you who are ready for the truth, I say this, love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with the energies of prayer for that person. If someone slaps you in the face, stand there and take it. If someone grabs your shirt, gift wrap your best coat and make a present of it. If someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to practice the servant life. No more tit for tat stuff, live generously. Here is a simple rule of thumb for behavior. Ask yourself, what would you want people to do for you? Then grab the initiative and do it for them. If you only love the lovable, do you expect a pat on the back? Run of the mill, mill sinners do that. If you only help those who help you, do you expect a medal? Garden variety sinners do that. If you only give for what you hope to get out of it, do you think that's charity? The stingiest of pawnbrokers does that. I tell you, love your enemies. Help and give without expecting return. You'll never, I promise, regret it. Live out this God-created identity the way our Father lives towards us, generously and graciously, even when we're at our worst. Our Father is kind. You be kind. Don't pick on people, jump on their failures, criticize their faults, unless, of course, you want the same treatment. Don't condemn those who are down. That hardness can boomerang. Be easy on people. You'll find life a lot easier. Give away your life. You'll find life given back, but not merely given back, given back with bonus and blessing. Giving, not getting, is the way. Generosity begets generosity. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So I'll say this, my bulletin wasn't right. Tells me there's supposed to be a song right there, which made no sense to me because I've done this pastor thing for at least four months now. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense to do a song right after the, the reading, but I guess, sure, why not? Hey, everybody does things a little bit differently, right? Please pray with me. Good and gracious God, we come here today, both with hearts that are somewhat saddened, but with joy in the knowledge that you have come. God, send your word into our hearts. May it strengthen us. May it embolden us. May it, may it send us out into the world proclaiming your good news for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, good morning, church. Nope. Nope. I said good morning, church. There we go. I'll tell you what. Um, at, at my church that I serve right now, we, we tend to have a few more people uh, than this in that one service that we have first thing in the morning. Uh, but that was a more powerful good morning than I have ever gotten back to them. Don't, don't send this to them. I'll get in trouble. Um, I am excited to be here with you today uh, to bring a little bit of good news, hopefully, uh, at a time when, uh, gosh, this world just seems like it just can't get any worse sometimes, and sometimes I say that out loud, and what goes and happens? It gets worse without fail. I got to stop talking like that. I'm going to get in trouble. And yet, this is this is a really fun passage as 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 a preacher, as as someone who is steeped in God's word. I may be a little bit of a rookie, but this isn't the first time I've heard this gospel message. I'm sure you're all relieved to hear that. Love your enemies. Gosh, that sounds so great when Jesus says it, doesn't it? It's so simple. I'll say this. Last week at my church, uh, our other pastor, Pastor Jim, preached actually on the parable of the Good Samaritan. Uh, we don't follow the regular uh, cycle of reading, so we, got, we get to pick and choose our own adventure in a lot of ways. And I think what's really fascinating when you contrast that passage with this one is this. We've all heard the parable of the Good Samaritan, right? He's on the side of the road, he comes and helps him. But what we often forget is what prompts that story. 
A man comes to Jesus and asks him all sorts of questions. How do I get in heaven? How do I get eternal life? Jesus keeps flipping the script, asking him questions back. And it comes up right before the parable of the Good Samaritan. The question that the, that the lawyer asks to Jesus is, who is my neighbor? Right? He's trying to figure out who it is that he's supposed to love. He's supposed to figure out who he's supposed to care for, who his that person who's supposed to be so close to and, and care about. And I think a lot of us have had those questions, right? Who is it that is beyond just my immediate inner circle that I'm supposed to care about? We like that question. It's, it, it's hard though, because we're not always so sure. And then we get this scripture. You notice nobody's asking him, well, who is my enemy? Who is it I'm not supposed to agree with? Because I think a lot of us, are pretty good at identifying who we don't always get along with. If they're sitting next to you right now, I don't want you to look over at them and point hands. (laughs) I don't want that. (laughs) And yet it's pretty easy for us to identify who we don't really care for. Maybe they don't look like us. Maybe they don't act like us. Maybe they don't worship like we do. Maybe they don't worship who we do. Maybe they don't eat what we eat. Maybe they don't have the same flag flying in front of their homes. Maybe they even don't vote like we do. Oh, (laughs) don't want that. It's pretty easy for us to figure out who isn't one of us. Who isn't our neighbor? Who is our enemy? Who is against me? Who is it who has it out for me and my friends and my family? I need this a little higher. And yet Jesus calls us to love him anyway. It sounds simple enough until you try to do it. It's hard. And here's the thing. If this was easy, if Jesus said, love your neighbors, and love your enemies, love those who are going to persecute you, love those who hate you, love those who give you harm, and it was super easy, I don't think Jesus would have to tell us a thing. We just do it. And yet Luke's gospel is filled with all these great ideas that Jesus isn't calling us just to love our enemies because he thinks it's a nice thing for us to do, not just because it'll make the world a little bit better. And I got to tell you, it probably will. Jesus calls us to do just a little bit better, to do one better, to give better than we can ever hope to get back. Why? That doesn't seem very fair, does it? I'm going to really be kind and love on this person and show them the best, and they are just going to be a jerk right back at me. That doesn't seem fair. I don't like that. And every time I found myself going to Jesus, Jesus, I don't like that very much. He tells me good. Because here's the thing. We're not called to be like the world as followers of Christ. We're called to imitate Christ. We're called to be like Christ because Christ has come into this world to show us what God is like. Now, I wrote this next little bit before I really got into the the knowledge and headspace of this community, because I got to tell you, I'm I'm excited to be here. You see, the term Christian, if you hadn't heard it before, means little Christ, right? We're supposed to be just a little bit like Christ as, as best we can. It's right there in our name. See, Jesus went around loving and healing and caring for the very same people that would put him to death on a cross. He loved them just the same. It's right there in our name. And I don't mean just Lutherans, because here's the thing. One, you didn't put Lutheran in the name of your church, which I'm actually kind of excited about. That doesn't happen very much. And the greatest irony is is there's, there's a thing that you should know about Lutherans and Lutherans and their history. You see, when Martin Luther was getting the Reformation started, when he was starting to say, here's what I think God is all about, he actually asked us not to call ourselves Lutheran. And I think that is great kudos to each and every one of you for listening to a guy who's been around and gone for 500 years. So good job, people. See, we're not going to be identified by our names, by our titles. 
but by our ability to show love. To show love, not feel love. It's easy to feel love. It is easy for me to say, get up in front of you. Yeah, I love my neighbor. Look at them, how sweet they are. Oh gosh, can you see what they did to their house? How is that going to affect the housing values in this neighborhood? Did you see the car that they're driving? How pretentious of them. That is way too nice of a car. Can't do that. It's even easy for me to say that I love my enemies when the threat of war breaks out across our world each and every day. It's easy for me to say, oh, I love them. I care for them. I wish them the best, but how can I show it? It's not easy. And yet it's exactly what we're called to do. Jesus says in John's gospel, 13th chapter, let me give you a new command. Love one another in the same way I loved you. You love one another. This is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples. When they see how, when they see the love you have for each other. Not when we put a bumper sticker on our car or wear a shirt or walk around with a Bible. No, they'll know that we follow the Christ by our love. And see, love in our scripture passage goes beyond what the other person expects from us but to treat them better than we could ever even imagine, more than they could ever hope to receive abundant, outrageous, ridiculous love. Stuff that makes, when somebody hears you say what you did, they go, you did what? I can't imagine anybody ever doing that for me. Well, let me show you. What is it you need? I'll do you one better. That's what we're called to do. And yet Jesus tells us in this passage, you know, we're going to love you, them even if they're going to turn around and smack you. Not even if they can't pay you back, but they're going to turn around and harm you. The cross tells us that. Jesus doesn't just know what is going to happen. Jesus is sure of it. Jesus, God in flesh, knows what his own people are going to do to him. And he loves them anyway. He knows not only will they not pay him back for all of the healing, the miracles, the signs, the hope, the good news that is coming. He knows he's not going to get paid back for it. He knows what's coming. He knows there's nothing good that's going to come from them. And he calls us to do the same. Love, even if we're sure that they're going to hurt us. Love them anyway. Now, here's the thing. I need to put a caveat on this situation. There are times and places where we love somebody who hurts us. And I mean really hurts us. This is not your permission to go out and love someone and continue to care for them in the same ways that you've always done it if you're in an abusive or harmful situation. Because here's the thing. Love isn't just a series of nice actions. Sometimes loving somebody means we walk away so that we can stop that harm from happening, not just to you, but so that they can stop perpetuating it. This is not permission to continue to enable and allow abuse and harm. Sometimes love is walking away. Sometimes love is pointing somebody to grace and forgiveness in the cross and calling them to repent for an act that can hurt. Does it seem hard? Does any of this seem easy? If it does, I need some help. Can you please talk to me afterwards? Because if you're sitting here going, oh yeah, no, that sounds great. I got, I got no problem with that whatsoever. You are a far better person than I am. I am as broken and sinful and hurt as the rest of you. If this was easy, Jesus wouldn't have to tell us this. Jesus wouldn't have to spend so much time on this. Here's the thing. Just like the way we feel like our enemies are hard to love, look how they vote, look how they dress, look how they act, look what they look like. Guess what? You're just as easy, just as hard to love sometimes too. I don't even have to know you that well. <laughs> we all are. 
We're all a mess. I see that over there. Don't, don't go, don't go there. No, no, no. <laughs> We're hard to love. We're a mess. We get it wrong all the time. When God tells us to love him, to love the one who created us, we fall short, don't we? When God tells us to love our neighbors, the ones we actually like, we still don't get it right all the time, do we? It's hard. This life of faith is tough. I can't get it right most of the time, and I went to school for this stuff. A lot. Oh, my gosh. Four years. Don't. If you feel a call to ministry, God bless you, but I'll try to talk you out of it. Trust me. It's hard to walk this life of faith perfectly. But here's the good news. You see, God isn't just calling us to love those broken, wicked, evil people because he expects us to do it. It's because God does it too. And he doesn't just love those wicked, evil, awful people that we have come to mind. He loves you just the same. As wicked and broken and sinful as we all are, God doesn't hold it against us. In some ways, we are God's enemy because we've heard what he has called us to do. Love God, love neighbor, make disciples. And what do we do? We mess it all up all the time. We have a great way of getting in the way of God's plan for his creation. We're actually really good experts at it. It's easy. And yet our God doesn't hold it against us. He loves us anyway. We'll do our best. We'll come to church on Sunday mornings, whether we meet in a country club, in a stone cathedral, or in a giant mega church that I drove past on the way up here. Oh my gosh, that thing is impressive. And yet, this list of instructions for us isn't just because God says this is a great thing for you to do. It's a description of what God really is like. In Romans, it tells us when we were at our worst, we were put on friendly terms with God by the sacrificial death of his son. Now that we're at our best, just think of how our lives will expand and deepen by means of his resurrection life. See, God does care if we get it right. He does call us to love God, to love neighbor, to share that good news, not just hold on to it for ourselves, not just hoard up that knowledge of resurrection for ourselves, but to tell our neighbors, to tell our friends, to tell the people we run into at the store and in our workplaces and on the golf course. He knows we can't get it right. To pay him back the way that maybe we should. A tit for tat kind of mentality that our gospel tells us. Because we can't. We can't get it right. We can never, ever do this perfectly. And yet we're reminded at tables like this one of grace and forgiveness. Of new life that is in Christ. That life death, and resurrection that gives promises to each and every one of us. Not because we earned it. Not because we can pay it back. Not because God expects us to get it right. But because he loves us. He loves us as neighbors, and yes, he loves us as enemies of his work in the world. God loves you. God loves me. God loves everybody outside of these doors and outside of these windows. And thanks be to God for that, because we can rest forever in his eternal grace. Amen. Amen.
please rise as you are able. There is going to be a place uh, where I ask for names. Just go ahead and call them out because I didn't get a list in advance. So if there is someone in your heart uh, that you feel called to pray for, I'd like to invite you to do that. Uh, you'll see where it comes. Please pray with me. United as the body in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, your cross stands before us as a light that shows our failures and our salvation through your son. Thank you for giving us and for coming among us to heal our pain and our sadness. And for your word, to praise you. Lord, in your mercy. You who preserves life, who sends among your people caretakers and peacemakers, who gives us scientists and inventors, give your people new eyes to behold the needs of your creation. Lead us into fields of wheat and pools of clean water. Shelter the earth with clouds. Nurture the soil with sun. Make our gratitude so profound that with joy we will love and guard what you have created for our very Lord in your mercy. O giver of prayer that groans within us, teach us to pray for our enemies. Their names are many, and we whisper some of them now before you in our hearts. Be with them, guard them from harm, and guide them in the way of your light. Save us from self-righteousness, and help us begin our lives anew. Lord, in your mercy, heal the nation's mighty Lord, reign peace on all people, give hope to the hopeless and love to the lonely, surprise the leaders of all nations with your joy. Lord, in your mercy, we beg comfort for the sick, O oh God, make whole the broken, make wise the foolish, humble the powerful, Make glad the hearts of those who tend our loved ones. And for any who are in pain, give them rest and rest. Speak love to those who we name in our hearts or out loud before you now. Lord, in your mercy, we pray. For this assembly, inspire us to be good stewards of the resources you have entrusted to us, just to give freely of ourselves, to offer our lives in service. Lord, in your mercy, Savior of the world, we give you thanks for the church, for the meek, for the courageous, for those who teach us how to wait. Praise you for the life-giving spirit that inhabits the saints whose visions have shown the path. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. It says here there's an offering, and I have no idea how that's done here. So... <laughs> They're going to, okay. Okay. Well, then that's what we're going to do. Invite right, to come forward as you are able.
that my broken heart is a part of your plan. When I try to pray, all I get is hurt and these four words. I will be done. I will be done. I will be done. Let's pray. Holy God, you have given us land in which to grow and thrive, food for survival and pleasure, air and water, fire and cold. Into the lives of others. In the name of the one who gave everything for us. Amen. I'd like to invite you to please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give our thanks. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all 
who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. As children of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who sin pass against us. Not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table, feast on God's abundant life for you. Please be seated. This is the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. It's the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you.
had to make sure I had mine too. <laughs> and may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And please stand as you were able. I missed that part. <laughs> Details. <laughs> and receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us now go forth, now filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to live as children of promise. We go forth together, living our faith, knowing that everywhere we go, everyone we meet, everything we do, we are Christ's hands and feet. So let go.